Hi there, I'm Rachel. I'm a biomechanics coach and an eye move freely uh, specialist and a strength coach as well. So this little video is uh, because recently a bodybuilder asked me about how they can grow the hamstrings. Everything's growing, everything's symmetrical, everything's looking really good. It's just those hamstrings not quite coming through. So we had a little discussion in the gym and I said, let me do a little video. You've got some tests in there that can maybe help out, identify what's going on. And then a little series of techniques that you may not have considered are causing your hamstrings to lag behind um, or if you're feeling discomfort, back, hips or knees, or if you just wanna make sure you function really well, um, then these tests and exercises could be helpful. But the focus for this is on the hamstrings. So have a look, let me know how you get on. Test number one to identify good pelvic function, hopefully. So cross one ankle over the other. Uh, make sure you're on a seat that sits your hips to around about 90 and the feet are underneath the knees so you're not kind of too high or too low. Cross one ankle over the other. Just make sure your ankle bone is just outside your knee thigh and then just see how far that knee drops to the floor. And then we do a comparison to the other side. If you have asymmetry, the higher side is showing to be um, dysfunctional, common, not a problem at all. And then we're gonna do the four sign exercise. So this is the four sign test, and it's good at identifying if your hips are functioning well, and we're looking for range and symmetry. So this side for me is slightly higher. I've been sitting down all day, so I'm gonna do the four sign exercise coming up. So, test number two is to identify if you have neural tension or, or a tight nervous system. Again, quite common and a big inhibitor of muscle function. In particular, hamstrings, calves, glutes, sort of posterior chain from the hips down, lower body. So to test it, we're gonna to start to stretch the entire nervous system, which comes from the top of the head, so we're in a seated position again, resting the hands behind, nice and relaxed. We're going to slump the body and very slowly start to lengthen the nervous system uh, from the head down to the waist. When we get to a point where we feel like uh, we're going to, we don't want to fall over, obviously, or, or fall forward in the seat, so we've still got control, we're then going to start to extend one leg. So just make sure that the ankle is fixed at 90, so we've got a same fixed point, measuring point, and as you bring the leg up, you may alter your position until you feel the beginning of tension, tingling, or tightness. Now, you could feel this anywhere. Um, I'm feeling it in the hamstring. You could argue that I'm lengthening the hamstring as well. But what we do next, we'll separate whether it's the nervous system or whether it's actually just a, the hamstring that's, um, that's creating tension in that feeling. So we're not going into the stretch, we're just finding the beginnings of it. So I'm going to go through it again, nice and slow. So come forward, nice and relaxed, try and relax everything. Chin down, so we lengthen the nerve through the neck. And then as you extend the leg, you go to the point where, and it's about there. So I feel it in the hamstring. So I'm going to keep everything in that position, but because I feel it from the waist down, I'm just going to lift my head, which actually shortens only the nerve, it doesn't shorten the hamstring, and I can feel a change in the sensation in my hamstring. So that confirms it's a nerve tension or tethering rather than the hamstrings. Um, the other option is when you get into that position, if you felt it, for example, in your back, you could simply point the toe or the glutes or something, or flex at the knee and you're still changing the tension and the idea is where you feel the tension, if you feel it in the body down, move the head to just test whether you can feel the sensation change to identify if it is nerve or if you feel it from the waist up then you move either the knee or the ankle, only one or the other and slowly and gently and if you get the sensation in the back or the neck or glutes changing from moving the knee or the ankle it just confirms your nerves are a bit tight. Nothing to worry about, in particular, unless you know you have a medical condition, uh, go see your healthcare practitioner, 
Um, otherwise, we can use a nerve mobilisation coming up shortly. Okay, so final test. So this test is to understand if you are quad dominant. So that's quads over hamstrings. So there is a natural dominance. The quad should be dominant by about, um, the, the quads are 100%, uh, hamstrings are around about 70%, depending on your sport or your chosen activity. But it's around about 70% ham to quad ratio is what we should have. What commonly happens is we sit on this area, we have the tension in the nerves like the previous test. So we're now going to test quad dominance. And to do that, we take a step back to so make sure you've got a clear space in front of you. Now this might need a little bit of a warm up, but the idea is you stand on the leg you're going to test and you're going to do a full leap forwards to land on the same leg, but the landing needs to be with the knee at 90, which is about there, so you see how the tibia goes forwards, the back foot should be off and the body upright, and you should be able to hold it for three seconds. This is a forward leap. So what we're testing is the quad to ham ability to stabilize the knee and both contract to stabilize. That's why we're going to that deep 90 degree angle at the knee. So I'm gonna have a go, <laughs> see if I can show you. Uh, a good result. So from here, leap, land, and hopefully I'm at 90 at the knee, body upright, hold for three. So if you don't have 90 at the knee, upright, or you can't hold for three, that means your quad to hand ratio is off, your quads are over dominant. I'm just going to try the other side. From here, I think that one, oh, maybe. So. Uh, so you do need the three things in place, 90 at the knee, body upright, so it's no good if you land here, you've got to be nice and upright, you've got to be able to hold it for three seconds, and you might notice the difference from one side to the other. If you get a result where you are quad dominant, I'm going to give you an exercise. Okay, so three ways to improve hamstring condition and visibility, strength, coordination, etc., amongst other things. So from our previous test, the four sign, I'm now going to introduce you to the four sign exercise. So this is a muscle energy technique, and the idea is we're going to contract the muscle isometrically, which means we're not moving, with only 20% of our maximum effort, and we're going to hold it for 20 seconds. So the movement we want to um, do isometrically is hip rotation. So I'm going to lift that leg, rotate the leg, so I'm going to resist against the opposite leg, but I need to use my hand as a block to add resistance and allow for that isometric contraction of the hip rotators. So I'm doing that with only 20% effort, hold for 20 seconds, the idea is this muscle energy technique creates a little bit of stimulation in those hip rotators and it should over time allow the knee to start to relax on the hip to improve in uh, its function. So I'm going to do that again and we're going to do four on each side. What you can do is do the four sign test, test we did earlier, do these techniques, the muscle energy techniques and then redo the test to see visually you can film it like I am here, if you get a difference and the knees start to drop or level off or open up. Or you might even just simply feel a difference, feel like you're more, mo more mobile. And then I would do these periodically throughout the day if you're sitting, but I would definitely do them before you train your hamstrings. So these are releasing tension on the nervous system as well as the muscles. So the way the muscles and the nerves interact by releasing the hip rotators, muscles like piriformis have a close relationship with the sciatic nerve and so we want to take tension off just in case, in case the hip rotators are involved in tethering of those nerves. And again, it is down to often lifestyle, it can be because we lift heavy weights in the gym. I'm just going to do on the other side as I'm talking to you, I hope you're doing this with me. And the idea is to really focus on the 20%. So what we're doing with these techniques is calming the system down. So we're just taking away the tensions, the body's compensations and adaptions that create problems in our function over time, 
initially we don't even know they're there, but we might realize that the hamstrings feel tight, don't grow, so we're losing that symmetry between the quads and the hams. Uh, we may feel back pain or knee pain. So each of these techniques help in both ascending and descending biomechanical influences. So I think I'm on the third one here. I'm going to do these with you. And again, it's around about 20 seconds. So it's a submaximal hold, around about 20% effort from the rotators. Hand is the block. Hold it for 20 seconds. Four reps each side. Take it down. Give it a shake. And then do that again. Now, each of the three tests and three exercises could all impact on each other. So I suggest you do all three tests, all three exercises, and then redo all the tests. Film it, same position of the camera, watch it back, and I would like to think you're going to see a change. So that is the foresight release to help improve pelvic function. So we're now going to use a nerve mobilisation technique. So we're going to get in the same position we did when we did the testing. Relax the hands behind, relax the body, roll forwards, just get position on the thin. Ideally have the thighs supported, because then when I extend the leg and find the point of tension, you've got options. You can either mobilise the nerve by lifting and lowering the head, so I can feel that sliding at the back of the hamstring. And you do eight to 10 reps, twice a day, no more. The other option would be, I'm gonna to go to the other side. Uh, if I feel it, if you felt it in the back, you could just use the foot. And you'll see I'm doing this nice and slowly. And you might find after a couple of reps, you don't find the tension. You've gotta go a bit further and then, oh, there it is again. And then you can do that ankle plantar dorsiflexion, or you've got that knee flexion extension as well. Keeping it nice and slow is the key component. Also try not to go into the sensation of stretching. Nerves don't like high speed or stretching, particularly if they're tethered. So if we treat them gently and kindly, they're more likely to respond. So two sets of eight to 10 repetitions, on either side, once, maximum twice a day. Um, and again, do this after the muscle energy release, the muscle energy technique, prior to strength training. Finally, the third exercise is loaded hamstring knee flexion, hamstring loading. So we often think about the hamstrings working with the glutes, which of course they do. But if we do moves like deadlifts uh, or squats, um, then they are going to be predominantly coming from the hip extensor group. Um, the hamstrings assist hip extension. They are a prime mover in knee flexion uh, more so. So to really get a good strength training component through onto those hamstrings to improve your foot to ham ratio of strength, I would recommend that you find a leg curl machine if you can in a gym or you might tie a band in front of you. You then want to lengthen the hamstrings as much as you can. So I'm gonna just flex the hip to really lengthen the hamstrings at the hip end. And then from there, you would pull against the resistance on the back of the, uh, the heel and ideally work the eccentric slower. So concentric and then slow on the eccentric but trying to get the, the hamstrings long first is kind of key. And then do your deadlifts, do your squats and everything else on top. Good luck, let me know how you get on.